diagnosis myodysplastic syndrome or myodysplastic myeloproliferative neoplasms may be quite challenging, especially when the criteria are not completely met and when there are confounding factors like patients having other diseases that may mimic MDS or MDS NPN. So integrating the tools or the results of the tools we have for diagnosis these diseases is extremely important. As you know, morphology and genetics have been the key indicators for diagnosis these hematologic malignancies, but flow cytometry, uh, looking for changes in antigen expression profiles of the progenitor cells or the maturing cells, and molecular genetics are very helpful to confirm the diagnosis. One example given when the patients present with cytopenia, which is the hallmark of MDS, can be secondary, but it can be also reflect a pre-MDS phase if one can add this um, the molecular genetic details for the uh, profiles of these uh, patients, one can get a more clear idea whether it concerns a clonal disorder or not. The same holds true for MDS and BN, and I give an example of chronic myelomonocytic leukemia. Many, many patients may present with monocytosis, but monocytosis can be really caused by different uh, inflammatory infectious uh, diseases. So we need to have additional tools. For example, fly flow cytometry there can help to identify the expression of the monocytes, which are different from clonal versus non-clonal in most of the cases. And again, molecular profiling is also helpful because chronic myelomonocytic leukemia is associated with some very typical associated mutations in different genes. So I, I think that we will give some or discuss some cases reflecting the integration of uh, morphology, genetics, cytogenetics, molecular genetics, and flow cytometry to, to illustrate that these uh, um, are very key uh, tools to come to a final diagnosis for this patient.